hello guys welcome back to my channel today we're going to be doing something new i decided to draw a landscape yes i know that's new and on top of that i decided to draw and color in that landscape with alcohol markers so let's just see how this goes first things first i'm using a reference that i got off of pinterest uh, that's why my computer is even being seen right now because i would be looking at my computer screen trying to sketch the baselines of this uh, landscape um, i did decide to go for the pine trees amongst mountains type of aesthetic so this is what i'm drawing at the moment and you know what's fun with these uh, type of landscapes is like in the back you can see mountains with snow you can see pine trees which are usually in like colder weathers and then at the forefront there's green grass and lilies or tulips or whatever type of flower there is like it's just a mix of everything which I thought would be pretty cool because the sky is supposed to be blue on this illustration there's gonna be green grass um, there's gonna be some yellow flowers Yeah, I just I love that aesthetic the green blue yellow. I think it's pretty cool. So I decided to go for that um, I'm just finishing up my sketch and then we'll get to it So before we get to adding the color, I did pull out my reference sheet. So I decided to, I guess, swatch the shades of my alcohol markers just to see what it is that I'm playing with and which color would be the most appropriate. I did decide to start off this landscape with this bright green. What I'm outlining at the moment is actually where the grass starts. So uh, I'm just starting with some of the main lines that I could see on my reference picture. And then I'm now moving on to that little house that's on the side. Now, something did quite piss me off while I was doing this landscape. I decided to use this shade of marker and it actually had no ink in it, no color at all. It had completely dried up. I don't know what happened. I had put the cap on, it was sealed, it was protected, but for a reason or another, there was no more color in it. So I did put it aside and I decided to use an alternative color, which is a dark brown, because it is a wooden house. So uh, first what I do is I draw the perimeter of it and then I try to add color into it. I then decided to move on to the flowers, so I picked the most appropriate yellow shade in my opinion and I started to draw the top of these flowers with it. And then I decided to move on to the mountains slash skyline situation. So you're going to see me add some blue with the marker before I realized that that marker too had somewhat dried out, like not completely, but I wasn't able to uh, fill in the mountain slash skyline with it. I decided to go ahead and use my colored pencils. Those are actually watercolor colored pencils. So if you add a little bit of that um, pencil shade before you play with uh, the water and the watercolor brush, then it will act as paint. So that's pretty cool, but that's not what I did. I just decided to fill in the colors with it. Uh, just as a base and then I moved on to apply some marker on top of it at that point I was just thinking you know what I have to do what I have to do to complete that landscape because I'm sitting here I've started it and I do plan to finish it at the end of this video so I didn't just press the record button to like abandon the job so that's why I had to rely on my colored pencils but as you can see the colored pencils were actually pretty vibrant I love that it was so um, dynamic so it was a nice quick decision that I decided to um, adopt to be able to complete that landscape
Now, I knew the pine trees were dark, so I needed something that was thick, that was efficient, and that would pretty much um, take over the blue of the mountains that I had colored in before. So I decided to go in with my fine tip markers. I used my reference sheet just to determine which tip would be the most appropriate to draw those pine trees. I found the perfect tip. It looked much better after I outlined those uh, pine trees. I thought it was a nice touch to the landscape. So I definitely don't regret that. So for the next few minutes, I was just filling in my landscape with um, the colored pencils. So I'm going to let the music vibe out while we let the landscape develop. So remember what I was telling you earlier about coloring in first with the watercolor pencil and then using the brush to then kind of like make it act as a painting effect. Here that's when I figured that out because at first I was trying to make the, water, the, the paper be wet and then I would add in the coloring but it didn't work so I realized I had to add the coloring in first and then go over whatever it is I had colored with the watercolor brush. It wasn't the most effective and my paper just started to become really drenched so I let that dry for now I let that be and I went back to coloring in the grass <laughs> I truly don't understand why I couldn't finish coloring in that grass in one shot. Like I just kept interrupting myself and moving on to something else on the illustration. Um, as you can see here, I moved on to the mountains. Uh, that color came out amazingly with the water and the watercolor pencils. But still, um, I was still trying to refine those clouds because they looked a little bit um, kind of like stained in my opinion like they weren't completely gray or white so i was tr still trying to work on that let the paper dry up a little bit and then go back to it so i guess that's what my little um intermission with coloring in the grass was about i was just checking in on the paper and seeing if i could correct that but i ended up finally completing the grass
So after completing the coloring of the grass, I decided to go over whatever it is that I had uh, filled in with the colored pencils. I decided to go over it with the marker. It was just a texture, really. And then I realized, oh my goodness, like this is looking so great. Like, look at this. I'm adding in the marker on top of whatever it is I had initially colored with the pencils. And it's looking so much richer, so much fuller. I guess from now on when I do work with like markers of this specific brand it's, it's a cheap brand I'm just testing out the markers before I invest into something that's pricier like uh, the art the RTX or art X whatever it is or the oh hoo hoo markers first I just want to you know develop some sort of technique but anyway for these specific markers I think the best thing to do is first to have a base of colored pencils and then go over it with the markers because the markers they do have like some lines in between strokes so with the base of colored pencil you pretty much fill that in and you make it be um, unrecognizable so it just looks like a uniform unified uh, coloring look at this look at this grass like tell me this doesn't look good I love the result. The more I developed that landscape, I just started to love the result more. So that was a lesson for me not to give up or abandon when it's starting to look a little bit suspicious. As people say, trust the process. I definitely trust the process. Also, side note, when you do add a base of colored pencils and then you go over it with the marker, it reduces the bleed. So there's actually like, there was minimal to no bleed on the next page. As you can see, since I wasn't using only the markers, I had used color pencils, I decided, you know what, why not bring in the oil pastels in it too? So I brought the oil pastels in the mix and I was just like adding some extra pigments to the landscape, just some more details. Um, and I thought it was a pretty good idea because I was able to add uh, highlights, I was able to add those little white dots which represent some sort of flower, whatever it's called. And then I also used my oil pastels to add details to the grass. So I first did a few uh, dark green dots and then I went ahead with my finger and I just dragged it in just to add a little bit of texture and detail. Additionally, I was able to finally refine my clouds and make it have some sort of white in it because it was looking okay, but it wasn't looking exactly like I wanted it to. So adding the white pastel on the clouds was amazing and using my fingers to blend in the oil pastels was also a pretty good technique. I know some people have like these uh, type of uh, metal tools that they use to blend the oil pastels. Some even use Q-tips, but I really think using your fingers to blend the oil pastels is like a nice personal intimate touch that you have with your drawing and it's really just as good. So this was my initial final result. I think it looks pretty good now that I think about it, but I did go back in um, and I covered that little path uh, thingy on the left side of the landscape. I really wanted to focus on the nature part of that landscape so I removed that little human infrastructure and so that's why I had removed the path. But that was my final result guys. I hope you enjoyed um, accompanying me throughout this process and don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you very soon.